Wife! Do you remember where we are and how we got here? Well, yesterday we read Ezekiel chapter 44. We did. And in that chapter, God was going, um, well, he was coming through a gate. He went through a gate. And, and now nobody can go through that gate. Ever. Except for kings, maybe, sort of, if they go through the portico. That's just, I, I don't no, know. No, they can't go through that gate. Whatever. They, they, can, they, can, they, can, meet them, they can meet them at the gate. They can come around the other side and meet him in sure, his, sure. his room. But but really what this is all about, I mm-hmm. think, is because I think that Ezekiel struck some sort of a financial gain deal with the uh, Zadokites. Mm-hmm. And he's like, hey, Zadokites, yo, you guys can be in charge. And you guys are like, awesome. But it, the rest of the people suck. So we're going to you just keep that whatever you got coming to me coming. Mm-hmm. And, and I'll just make sure that you guys look like the best. Let's shake on a grift. Yeah. Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, like, he specifically went out of his way to say they get the choicest things. They, they get, get the best all things. All the good things. And I'm like, oh, who are these Zadokites? Like, what the fuck did they do? They're the special Levites or whatever. Yeah. Political bullshit is what it is. Yes. So yes, it is. Uh, that was Ezekiel chapter forty-four. Sure, as fuck was. And we are running late this week, so the, obviously most of you are going to be listening to this if you're up to date with everything on a Saturday, which is not our normal day for these episodes. Right. And we apologize. Mm-hmm. Um, we will still be doing a Q and A. It may be coming out on Sunday, and I'm not sure a hundred percent whether we're going to be doing the. Um, the, Sacrilegious book club. Yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Um, but we'll we'll see if yeah. we if we can we can if we can't we can't and we apologize in advance. It's been a little bit of a crazy week with me changing jobs and just different things going on. So we apologize. Um, but that being said, are mm-hmm. you ready to get into Ezekiel? Uh, what, what are we getting into today? Sorry, <laughs> I, I, I fucked that all up. I fucked that all up. We are getting into Ezekiel chapter 45. All right, let's fucking do this shit. Okie dokie. Okay, we are hopping into Ezekiel chapter 45, or as I affectionately call my dude, Easy Kyle. Right. Big E. Yep. Here we go. And just want to reiterate that... The final section of Ezekiel, which is chapters 40 through 48. Right. They're often referred to as the Torah of Ezekiel. Okay. Particularly because this is so Torah-like and torturous. Right. Yes, it definitely is. Because this is just some tedious bullshit over some stupid crap. It's Leviticus light. Building shit and revamping the laws of Leviticus and like come Re-up on up in the grift. Let's let's skip all this shit. Mm-hmm. Um, we are also um continuing where we left off. So, so the first word. I wonder. I wonder how many chapters begin with then. Well, this one doesn't start with then. Oh, but well, I'm impressed. It is a continuation of the previous section, right? And we'll continue on into the next. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. It doesn't start with then, but it does start with when. <laughs> <laughs> and you do raise a good question. Yeah, How many yeah. chapters start with then? Right, right. All right. When you allot the land as an inheritance, you are to present to the Lord a portion of the land as a sacred district. 25,000 oh. cubits long and 20,000 cubits wide. The entire area will be holy. Now, I have some notes about this. Did you? Your face looks really confused. Did you yeah, want me to you go have ahead? To, and, you have to, we have to donate land to the God. All right. to God now. Here's the thing. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. So a section of the land was first set apart as God's portion, and this was an acknowledgement that all the land was really God's. It was really His. Okay. Within this portion was the temple, surrounded by an open space to emphasize the separation of the holy things of God. From the unclean things of um, everyday life outside. Priests and Levites were given first consideration in the resettlement arrangements so that they could be near to the temple. And the portion of the land in which the temple was situated was given to the priests and a portion of the same size adjoining it is given to the Levites. Okay. Okay. So this is when... They rebuild the temple someday that they haven't done yet. Sure. And they reallot all the land. Okay. You know what I mean? They're like, 
it's not just about rebuilding the temple. It's about bringing the people home, where we're going to house them, how they're going to, like, what that land is going to look like. Got it. And where they're all going to live and be. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. So that's, that's, it's just it's like every one of these chapters is like going a little bit bigger as to how we're going to be dealing with this future prophecy coming true. See, the way I'm interpreting this is that it's just going to be the Zadokites getting like free land. Yeah, and, and basically. I mean, that's what it sounds yeah. like to me. Yeah. I mean, they get the best land. Yeah, right, for yeah. sure. For yeah. sure. Okay, so anyway, there's a big portion of land that goes to the Lord, okay? Yeah. Of this land that goes to the Lord, Uh a section 500 cubits square is to be for the sanctuary with 50 cubits around it for open land. In the sacred district, measure off a section 25,000 cubits long and 10,000 cubits wide. In it will be the sanctuary, the most holy place. Okay. It will be the sacred portion of the land for the priests yeah, um, yeah, yeah. who minister in the sanctuary and who draw near to minister before the Lord. Of course. Yeah. You know, I mean, they don't they grift. don't own anything, but no. they but God owns lots of things for them, mm-hmm. including mm-hmm. the best choices, things in the land. They get the, the best the food. Things. They get to live in the pretty area. The, this redistribution of goods mm-hmm. sounds very um, biased towards certain groups of people that. Probably are in with the people in power. Like I said, Grift is going to Grift. Yeah, yeah. Grifty McGillicuddy. Right, right. It will be a place for their houses as well as a holy place for the sanctuary. An area 25,000 cubits long and 10,000 cubits wide will belong to the Levites who serve in the temple as their possession for towns to live in. You are to give the city as its property an area 5,000 cubits wide and 25,000 cubits long adjoining the sacred portion. It will belong to all Israel. Okay? Now, they did. I do remember that the the Levites were to live in various cities and areas mm-hmm. around um, Israel. That and they land the first was time. to but, be given to them. Right. But those lands were separate from, like, they were outside of the, the areas that other people owned. They were just outside of the cities or in between cities or things like that. They were, so, they were like, written in kind of like. Right. And there wasn't, like, a specific amount of land that they were right. supposed to get either. Like, right. this is very specific. Mm-hmm. And I find it odd. That it's almost being like very specific. It's almost like they started with the building to make it feel like we're just going back to the beginning, y'all. Yeah. To get everybody like on board, and then like right, right, and everybody's like, yeah, 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 let's build this. And then like the next chapter, he's like, and also we're gonna and God came in the east, so you can't go in the east gate. Yeah, yeah, that tracks. And then this one, he's like, and also we're giving uh, land to them, and they're like. Yeah. Right. Um, what's next? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, a little bit more each time just to see what he can get away with, right? No, it definitely feels that way. You know, like they could do, they didn't have to, they didn't even have a land to begin with. They, they had right. to, you know, go to the promised land. Mm-hmm. And then now, now it's just like this slow, you know, it, it's evolving into the slow grift of like what more can the priests take from people. Mm-hmm. And not make it sound like they're taking more and more and more. Right. 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 The prince will have the land bordering each, the prince being the king, yeah. will have the land bordering each side of the area formed by the sacred district and the property of the city. It will extend westward from the west side and eastward from the east side, running lengthwise from the western to the eastern border, parallel to one of the tribal portions. Okay. This land will be his possession in Israel, that king guy. Yeah. Okay. And my princes will no longer oppress my people, but will allow the people of Israel to possess the land according to their tribes. So okay. he's like, you kings are going to behave now. When, whenever that that someday happens. But why Why would people... Re- okay, well, I, I know he's going to change their hearts. He's going to bring them back. Now, all these wonderful things are going to happen, right? Mm-hmm. But didn't we hear similar things before? And it didn't work. Like, we we had shitty kings. We had somewhat okay kings. We uh, had- But he didn't say, you kings will be great. 
He actually poo-pooed the idea of kings and was like, I'm right. your which, king. Which and the even people- that is a little bit confusing, right? Like, why why are we all of a sudden okay with them and they're, like, godly and wonderful? I don't think that he's saying that the gods are that the kings are godly and wonderful. Okay. He's saying that God is telling the kings, and you better behave unlike in the past. Okay. When... You kingly fucks were taking advantage of the people. He's saying, you are not going to oppress my people. Got it. You kingly fuck. Okay. You get land. You get to be in charge. But it specifically says, you will no longer oppress my people. So I don't think he's, like, happy with. No, I guess I'm just railing against the idea that he couldn't have fixed this before. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, why is this time different? It's it's like the kid that cried wolf, right? Mm-hmm. You 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 say something so many times, we stop believing you. You know, absolutely. Yeah, one hundred percent. No, I'm, I've I've definitely stopped believing the claims of of, of this God saying that he's going to do these things because it's like, yeah, dude, it's, you're like a fucking broken record. Yeah, but your question, like, I feel like I right. changed the question. I, sorry, your sorry. question was. What is the deal with the king and why are we okay with kings? And the answer is he was never okay with kings sure. and he still apparently isn't according to this phrasing. Okay. All so right. that's the answer to your question. But why does he give them land to exist in then? If he's not okay with them, why doesn't he come up with another solution? Because you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Or, or there is the idea that apparently at this time it's going to be David or whatever is going to be the one leading this tribe at that point, right? Mm-hmm. Which is supposedly going to be a very godly king that's in, okay. pa- in power, And then right? there's that, yeah. So I do feel like maybe there is some, like, he's placing somebody in that position that he trusts, right? Like, okay. that's, that's maybe a possibility. But also, I think that he does, like, give... Okay, in canon, <laughs> pretending that this god exists merely for the purpose of the story. Yeah, like, yeah, caveat, yeah, yeah. caveat, caveat, caveat. Right, right, right. Um, God does give the people rope to hang themselves mm-hmm. with. They insisted on having kings, and he's like, you're not going to like it. It's going to be bad. And they were like, no, give us kings. And he was like, fine, have some fucking kings, whatever. And so he's just letting them continue to have the kings that they insisted on having. He's like, this is what you wanted. This is what you get. I guess. I just, I, I just The part that bothers me is that when... The, the only thing it took for him to change people's hearts, to, to bring them back and make them better and rise them, raise them from the graves of their captivity and all this shit, right? Mm-hmm. Was that people were making fun of him. Yeah. I mean, I, it's just, it's such, like, it's, it's, it's such utter bullshit. It's such small humanness. Yeah. 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 I, I just, I, I can't get behind any of these messages. No, I'm, I understand and I agree with you. I, I'm just, I, just, I can't understand how a priest or pastor, or parishioner reads these texts and comes up with other things. You know, like I'm saying, I guess they, it, it's like literally if you worship, like, you know, how people like worship the Beatles or whatever, or, you know, various other idols that people have that the they Beatles, worship, you know, like Elton the, the, the band, or the Elvis. Beatles. Yeah, okay. yeah, sure. I said Elton, but, but I mean, if you, if you truly, like, if you're in love with something to the fullest extent, right? I guess I can understand making excuses for it, but it just you you think you would still be able to at least admit that they're flaws, right? Yeah. But it's so far gone and it's been so many apologists takes um, that we can't even admit that there's flaws. The same people, it's the same mentality, okay, that the the people who cannot hear a flaw against God and the Bible and Christianity right. are the same people that cannot stand to hear anybody say a bad thing about America. No, I agree. And that's why agree. those two groups have coalesced because the mentality is so similar. Right. They right. cannot hear you complain about that because they are like, how dare? It's perfect. They're and the, if you don't like it, don't let the door hit you in the ass. Right. They're going, la, 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 la. Don't challenge my ideas, la, 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 la. Right. I mean, well, I mean, I don't know if you caught this when we were over at my dad, my mom and dad's house um, a few nights ago. Right. Um, I keep bringing it up this week because it keeps being prevalent. Sure. But um, I was talking about... Um, the healthcare system. Yeah. And I mean, um, uh, what was it? So they had asked about something and I said, well, that's not covered by our insurance or something like that. Yeah. 
And then Kid said something to the effect of that's because of our wonderful healthcare system. Right. I remember that. Yeah. And I kind of was like, oh, that's not going to fly well right, with my very right. Republican, you know, Christian parents. And my dad did respond to that. And he said, every country has a different health care system. And it's it's got its ups and it's got its downs. It's got its flaws and imperfections. And it's, you know, just like anybody else. So, like, he was allowing that there is some kind of bad in it. But we should not complain about it at all because it's still American and good. And not being able to admit a flaw or a fallacy in the system means that you cannot seek to better it. I'm not saying that our healthcare system is the best or the worst. I'm saying it's got a lot of work to do. And there's no reason in the world it can't be better given that this is America. And as the Republicans and Christian American nationalists always say, the best fucking country on the planet So surely the best country on the planet can find a way to improve our very flawed, obviously imperfect healthcare system. Well, except for that we have an entire political system at this point that cares nothing about actually fixing problems. They are the whole idea of what politics is at this point, especially with the Republican Party, is that they are just contrarian. They they don't. They don't care if they actually ever do anything. No. It's what do we not like about the other side? Right. They're either status quo or contrarian. Yeah. Don't change it because if you change it, I might not be getting as much money or power and that would be bad. And it is about me, by the way, me and my money and power. Oh, yeah. And also, oh, Obama or Biden or anybody on the other team said this, then suddenly the value I had yesterday has changed to the exact opposite of what it was Exactly. in order to just be the opposite. No, they they literally do that all the time. Mm -hmm. There are literally times when they will completely do a... 360 on their viewpoint Mm -hmm. just to be counter to the the main party leaders in the Democratic Party. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck? You how I I don't understand how anybody doesn't see through this bullshit. Like you we can literally take you saying one thing three days ago Mm -hmm. and something completely different today. And And no and no one gives a fuck. Why does no one give a fuck? That's what I don't understand. That's what confounds me. Yeah. Like, if I were to, you know, tell my parents, like, you know, Trump said this yesterday and this today, and those are exactly opposite uh, from each other. Moreover, his actions and words are exactly not who I've ever known you to be or represent or want to follow, like, either pre-Christian era for you or post-Christian era for you. So I'm really confused how you could support this person. Yeah. Please explain. And their response would be something to the effect of, you know, oh, you wouldn't understand or, oh, you're just bringing up a very contentious point and I don't want to get into it with you. Right. Or, right. oh, you're taking things out of context. That That's yeah. what that would be. Well, you neg- know? negative ideas are always easier to pitch and get people angry about mm-hmm. than positive ideas, right? Sure. If you're trying to make positive changes, that's not as sexy as, as something that sucks, right? S- sucking sells. If you, <laughs> if you fucking, I'm just saying. Sucky sells. <laughs> if it bleeds, it leads. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, if you, if you are, if you're yelling at somebody, that's a lot more appealing to most people as far as entertainment value. Sure. Than somebody trying to work with somebody, right? Sure. So you get a lot more attention, and it's sometimes negative attention, but that negative attention leads to more views, which mm-hmm. leads to more people maybe agreeing with your point of view or being swayed to your point of view or or even simply that you are a strong man who they are like, I don't care what he stands for. He's alpha male, and I'm going to follow that because look at how much he yells and blusters. Right. You know? We I, love us a quote-unquote alpha male, don't yeah, we? Yeah, whatever. Fuck that. Fuck that. Right. Alpha males are fucking... Mm. They're cucks. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, sorry. We got off on a bit of a tangent there. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Okay. All right. <laughs> you have gone far enough, princes of Israel. See, he's giving them what for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Give up your violence and oppression and do what is just and right. Okay. Stop dispossessing my people. 
declares the sovereign lord. But he's going to give them land. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. You are to use accurate scales, an accurate ephah, and an accurate bath. Okay. Just, these are just different measures yeah, measurements and, and stuff. Yeah. Sure. And he's saying, don't cheat my people. Right. Use correct scales. Yeah. The ephah and the bath are to be the exact same size. The bath containing a tenth of a homer and the ephah a tenth of a homer. I just, I'm trying to imagine this god that created the sun and the universe and Neptune. Talking and about ephahs and homers. Fucking, you know, crab nebula <laughs> who is worried about a tenth of an ephah. Yeah. Like, wh- what the fuck is yeah. this? You no, know, a tenth of a homer, my love. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, whatever. The I don't, things I don't care. are. Um, it's it's stupid, is what it is. Yeah, definitely. Ephas and homers. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And the homer is to be the standard measure for both. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The shekel is to consist of twenty fucking jarras. Okay. Of course. Yeah, those jarras are important. Yeah. Twenty shekels plus twenty five shekels plus fifteen shekels equal one mina. Okay. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Can you math? No, I can't. This is a special gift you are to offer. A sixth of an ephah from each homer of wheat and a sixth of an ephah from each homer of barley. That was rough for you. Was it rough. was because I cannot say sixth. <laughs> I can't. Except for that I was listening to some earlier podcasts that we did mm-hmm. and you did it just fine. I tried just I then. Feel like, I feel like you did try, but yeah, I, I feel like. It's like a mental block for you sometimes, and not always, though. Like, sometimes it hits you, and you're just like, whatever, I'm just going to say it, and you say it. I so. tried really hard just then. You did. You say it. Sixth. Sixth. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot do it. Okay, anyway, the prescribed portion of olive oil measured by the bath is a tenth of a bath. I need a bath. <laughs> from each core, which consists of ten baths or one homer for ten baths are equivalent oh, to a homer. God. Oh, this is like those math problems where they're like three apples equals a <laughs> clock. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yes. The ones where they do it on Facebook and they're like, only a genius can get this right. Right, right. Also, one sheep is to be taken from every flock of 200 from the well-watered pastures of Israel. I would have to write this down, and I don't care enough to. I mean, they did. It's in the fucking Bible. I know, but for me to, like, I would need to write it in a column with sure, equal signs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And it would it would need to be notes that I wrote for me to be able to remember. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, I can't hold all of these things in my head. Well, I'm sure this was much more of a daily practice for people, so I'm sure they, like, much like making change from cash, I'm sure it was like pretty simple for more simple than we would have, sure. you know, time trying to figure it out. So. Sure. When you said making change, for a second I thought you were going to say making love. And all I could think of was that Air Supply song, making love out of nothing at all. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so the whole time you were talking, my mind was going, making love out of nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of missed what you were saying, but I got think it. that I got the better end of the conversation right, yeah, yeah, yeah. honestly yeah. these will be used for the grain offerings burnt offerings and fellowship offerings all the offerings you know mm-hmm. to make atonement for the people you know because they suck well, hold on why is he telling the kings to be fair in their weights when these are the offerings which will be done by the priests because i don't know what is the what does the king have to do with any that that leads me to believe that the king ends up with some of these offerings but we're not being told that I, I that would be my guess. I don't know. Um, but tell me, I'm tell me, I'm probably on the right track here. I, I mean, why would the king care about making the weights weigh less or more or whatever if he wasn't getting some sort oh, of a cut? Because okay, here's the deal: the king is in charge of receiving the offerings from the people, and then the king takes the offerings from the people and gives in representation of the people to uh, the priests. Are you I read sure? Yeah, I read that in my notes somewhere, okay. and I didn't understand how it applied, and now I just got okay. the, All right. what it is. Yeah, so right. he's saying, kings, you need to have these equal. Don't be skimming off the top got it. is basically what it comes to. Sure. The kings were, like, you know, taking more than... yeah. They were supposed to, so that they could pocket the 
the extra. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Yep. These will be used for the grain offerings, burnt offerings, and fellowship offerings to make atonement for the people, declares the Sovereign Lord. All the people of the land will be required to give this special offering. Oh, okay. To the prince in Israel. Oh, there it goes. That's right, yeah. Okay. It will be the duty of the prince to provide the burnt offerings, grain offerings, and drink offerings at the festivals, the new moons, and the Sabbath, Sabbaths. Okay. At all the appointed festivals of Israel. Oh, okay. So, like, he collects everything from the people and then, like, um, uses that money for the pizza party. How did the king get the job? Like, God doesn't even like the kings. How did the king get the job of collecting all the taxes for mm-hmm. the for the God? It just does. I don't know. Okay. God's like, whatever. I guess this is what we do. Right. We have a fucking king. Okay. I'm just checking. I mean, it's it been seems, that way. It seemed, well, I don't recall them saying that before with regard to the kings being the mediator between the... Because, uh, like, they would tell people... They would have people going to the gates of the temple... As I recall it in like the Levitical ones that they were describing, this seems like a different practice. Like something's changed. Yeah, it's just making it, it, this is the administrative way that they're doing it now. Right. And I don't. Politics, though. Yeah. I mean, I think it's politics because it's it's, the kings are scraping off the top. They're taking Mm -hmm. some sort of cut for what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And they're just, you know, the only only beef they have with them at this point is that they they were taking too much off the top. Oh, okay. Right? Like, yeah. like, that's how I'm feeling about, like, what they're saying here is that it's just they were taking too much of a cut. And so they're saying... Like, you're cheating on top of taking your cut, so you stop that. You stop taking any cut. Right. Well, yeah, no, I don't, I don't... I guarantee they're taking a cut. But still. he... But God is saying don't take any cut. Yeah, well... I mean, it says it in the Bible. What, what king is going to do that amount of work for, for nothing? I don't fucking doesn't, know. It doesn't seem correct to me. I don't know. I'm just telling you what it says. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just telling you what I don't believe. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. He will provide the sin offerings, grain offerings, burnt offerings, and fellowship offerings to make atonement for the Israelites. Okay. Like I said, he's throwing the pizza party. Right, right. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. All right. In the first month, on the first day, you are to take a young bull without defect and purify the sanctuary. The priest is to take some of the blood of the sin offering and put it on the doorposts of the temple, okay. on the four corners of the upper ledge of the altar, and on the gate posts of the inner court. You know how we spread blood everywhere? Yeah, because that's fun, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. disgusting. Right. You are to do the same on the seventh day of the month for anyone who sins unintentionally or through ignorance. I didn't hmm. know that bitch belonged to somebody else when I raped her. I didn't know my wife had started her period. I didn't know. Okay. I didn't right. know when I killed that goat that it was my neighbor's. Right, right. I didn't know. Yeah. Oopsie. It was an unintentional and unknown sins. Okay. Mm-hmm. I got mm-hmm. it. Yeah. I didn't mean to, you know, whack off at night. <laughs> I, I woke I feel up. Like, I feel like that, that would have to be intentional. Mm-hmm. I woke up and there was sperm all over me. Mm, yeah. Well, well, yeah. I mean, you know, it's nocturnal emissions, right? Nocturnal yeah, that, that emissions, happen. man. Sure. I came in my sleep. I yeah. can't help it. Right. I woke up and there I was with a stiffy. Yeah. What you gonna do? Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. So you are to make atonement for the temple. Okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. In the first month of the 14th day, you are to observe the Passover, a festival lasting seven days, during which you shall eat bread made without yeast, Mm -hmm. as you do. Right. On that day, the prince is to provide a bull as a sin offering for himself and for all the people of the land. Every day during the seven days of the festival, he is to provide seven bulls and seven rams without defect as a burnt offering to the Lord and a male goat for a sin offering. There's a lot of slaughtering that's mm, happening at that temple. So much. I feel like they couldn't have been that clean either. It had you know? to stink and be dirty and have so right? many flies. Yeah. Ugh. He is to provide as a grain offering an ephah for each bull and an ephah for each ram along with a hen of olive oil for each ephah. Okay. Sure. During the seven days of the festival, which begins in the seventh month on the 15th day, he has to make the same provision for sin offerings, burnt offerings, grain offerings, and oil. The end. Okay. So, I mean, we're, <laughs> we're literally back. I mean, we're. And no wonder they call this the Torah of Ezekiel. Yeah. Like, this is literally basically like reading 
Leviticus. Except for instead of it being made by what felt like it was the people. Right. Now it's just Ezekiel's making up his own rules. Right. And that's why it feels like this is like, well, like I said, I think it was the last chapter where I was like, this is Ezekiel trying to make, you know, God great again or whatever. Right. And it's just, he keeps bringing, like, this is all old school Israeli, you know, bullshit that was happening early on in the Torah. And it's, the same things are happening in Christianity now where people are trying to bring back like the Old Testament stuff, right? And, mm-hmm. and they're trying to revive some of these ideas that were in the Old Testament. And they're like, we need to go back to punishment and, blah, blah, you know, like and- forget this peace bullshit, you know. But it's just that like, people love to punish them. Like, I think they like the idea of people being punished for things. And they never see themselves as being the person that should be in that role that gets punished. Well, especially if you're a white male, why would you? Right, right. You see yourself from a perspective of privilege, Mm -hmm. and that's why you're 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 immune to that, right? Sure. Doesn't it's not going to affect you? It's very exciting to watch other people be punished. But yeah, but yeah, I, I really do believe that part of this is kind of what we were talking about earlier, where people like the negativity. They like the idea of people being punished. Yeah. I mean, that's why we like. That's why people like to watch those gladiator fights back in Roman times or, mm-hmm. or whatever. That's why we like to watch people in Fear Factor. Yeah. You know, like it's yeah. we like to see people suffer. Suffer. I mean, it, it's, I we mean, being humanity, right, not no. yeah, 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 we, yeah. me, and you. No, no. I fuck I that do reality not. TV Ooh. bullshit. I hate that crap. I cannot stand reality TV. That's just honestly. my personal opinion. If you like reality TV, more power to you, but I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. So. I can't do most of. Uh, Regular time TV, honestly. Yeah. What it's do you, funny. What do we call that? Uh, the prime time TV. Prime time TV. The the stuff that just is on the regular channels. Yeah. Right. Boy, sure. Yeah. Uh, Network TV. Network TV. Yeah. I can't stand it. So, I, I mean, I like, I like my, uh, I like my gods to be proven and I like my shows to be fictional. Yeah. You know, I, that, that's how I, that's how I want my life to work. And moreover, I don't like commercials. So um, if I can pay for a platform to not have commercials, I will do that. Right. And if I can't, I mute them. I will also watch a good documentary. But I not love, like, I love know, documentaries. Yeah. Documentaries are good. Yeah. Um, I've been watching one on um, like the early um, evolution of the planet yeah. uh, with the toddler that I babysit. Oh, okay. And of course it's narrated by Morgan Freeman as always, they all always, are. Yeah. 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 And it's really interesting. Yeah. It's really cool stuff. Yeah. I mean, even though I know a lot of that, I mean, we all know how life started on Do the we? planet. I mean, creationists, flat earthers. Okay. I mean, those of us who, are into that sort of oh. thing. Yeah. <laughs> reality. <laughs> yes. Reality. Yeah. Um, it, it's cool to watch these things because um, more information always becomes available. And so every decade there's a new. Yeah. Um, no, it is interesting how things evolve over time to, I mean, that's, that's, evolve that, that's over time. Well, yeah. But including I mean, information. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's the, that's the part that, Christians will rail against you about, right? They're like, well, science doesn't always get it right. No, it doesn't. We never, it doesn't we never claim to. We never claim to get it right every time. Science's we claim, point is not to get it right. Science's point is to keep learning more. What we got, science's point is to keep learning what we got wrong. Yes. That's that's what science is all about. Yes. Like we we don't prove what's right, we prove what's wrong. And and the, the beauty of science is that most scientists are curious enough to challenge most ideas. Right. Right. And that's and it's usually like some of the bigger ideas out there. We're not going to prove wrong, but we might tweak the idea of how we view them. Right. Right. And that's the that's the really interesting thing to me about science is that mm-hmm. we endeavor to learn as much as possible about how we are here, why things happen, and, and all this, mm-hmm. and, and it just intrigues me to to no end. I, mean, I like I I will do this in front of people all the time. Like they're uh, one of my favorite you know things is just one of the easiest science experiments you can do is you take a piece of paper, mm-hmm. and this is I, I do this all the time to people. I'm like because especially if I'm talking to somebody who's like a anti science or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, watch this. And I blow over top of the piece of paper and then the paper rises, right? Mm-hmm. Well, it's Bernoulli's principle. And 
That's what makes planes fly, right? And and this we know because of science. We know this because of science. Because right. somebody decided, hey, how does this work? Why does this do this thing? How does this apply in in real life? How do we make this uh, commercial application? What do we do with this, right? Right. It's that's what this is, and it's not to say that that idea even won't evolve in in scope, but it is still a principle that we can apply to make things work, and that's what the that's what's amazing about science. Yep. That's all. Well, I learned that um, during the early, early, early stages of the planet forming, yeah. that the majority of the earliest types of sharks and other sea creatures, they uh-huh. died out in the second um, mass extinction okay. because um, so much water had had uh, melted and become available that um the greening of the planet, they called it. Yeah. Um, that all of the plants and stuff became just flew into existence on the dry parts of the land, and this created an overabundance of plankton, and oh, kind yeah, of suffocated the seas, and it suffocated the seas. Interesting. And so, interesting. Um, the shark as we know it today was like one of those that squeaked by. Huh. Otherwise. Would we'd have no sharks? Interesting, interesting. And in this process, there was one early, early, really, really cool looking um, um, old ancestor of of shark that is not really. It's not even considered part of the shark family. It's so distant, right? Um, but it was shark like. But his head was like shaped like a rectangle, and he had like a really sour just mean look on his face. I mean, sharks in general do just look mad. They look like cranky fucks. Right, right. Right? And this particular one is like called a like Donglia something or other. Okay. And so this three-year-old and I, we could never remember what it was called, so we just kept calling it a Donklin. Yeah. Because, you know, close enough, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, he wanted me to draw the Donklin, and the thing is, is that's not what I do. Like, I don't don't draw. draw. I don't draw. Right. Like, at all. Kid draws. Kid draws. Yeah. You do okay. I, I can. I can. I actually do really good at, like, sketching things that I look at. hmm So, like, not really good. I do passable yeah. sketches. Yeah. But so. I, I don't enjoy it, and I'm not good at it. Right, right. And it's just something I, I don't love doing. Right. And he threw a fit until I would draw the Donklin. So I tried to draw it and then he got angry with me because <laughs> it was as bad and worse yeah. as I knew it would be. <laughs> I was art shamed by a three year old. That's awesome. Right. Yeah. 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 Good, good, good times. Makes for a good story. Right. But right. yeah, Morgan Freeman, it's on Netflix. I forget what it's called. Um, it's something like This Planet or Our Planet, something like that. Got it. Great show if you're trying to learn more about yeah. evolution and how life got here right and the dunklin is in the second half of the second episode there you go there you go something to look forward to mm-hmm. all right well i think we have uh beat this uh chapter to death with i think we've everything avoided, but the chapter yeah we yeah. avoided the chapter so, as much as possible sorry for all the rambling everybody i'm but not sorry it was fun yeah mm-hmm. it was, i had fun i had yeah. fun yeah. Um, so that was Ezekiel chapter 45. It sure as fuck was. And more than likely, it'll be Sunday before we get the Q&A out. So uh, we'll be back on sa- or on Sunday then with our Q&A, not on Saturday, maybe someday. Right. And then we may, may do the Sacrilegious Book Club. And then I'll definitely get a weekly wrap up out this week. And then we'll be back on Monday with... Ezekiel chapter 46. All right. We'll see you then. Bye.